it's clear when they leave here, their attitudes and behaviours change. They understand something that they probably haven't connected before, which is that abstract idea that some of them will have about you carry a knife to protect yourself. They suddenly realise in carrying a knife, they are carrying the pain, misery and tragedy that knife crime brings. One in four young people who come here think a knife will protect them. That's a crazy statistic and shows that that education is really needed. We've also seen, you know, a propensity for, for knife carrying to get younger. Um, and that's why it's really important to talk to young people, particularly around the last year of their education in primary school and the first year of their education in secondary school, that massive change that, that, that they make in terms of their environment and their friendship groups. Getting in early, helping young people to understand um, some of the challenges they will face and how they can positively um, address those challenges really, really important because otherwise what we, what we tend to see is all the other drivers around knife crime helping young people make more negative decisions and we see increased knife crime. So one of the things we do over at Voice for Youth Against Violence is provide opportunities through sports, whether that's boxing, whether it's football, where they're able to come be part of something greater, something bigger than themselves, learn to communicate, learn to relate to other people. A lot of young people um, are, are carrying trauma through these programs we look at developing a positive mindset, look at positive interactions and making them feel positive about themselves. Damn, what they got? They got Jim Jones, man. They got a they got a goddamn English Jim Jones. Ain't that something, man? Um, it's something right here that I wanted to show you. Look, look at look at these stats, man. Let me see. Look at that, man. So This is um, Stop and Search Statistics. Okay, so this is who they stop when they search. This number right here, this should be 5%. But they're, they're, they're searching white people because they want to make it see, they want to make it obvious that they're not being racist. They want to overdo that they're not being racist. So they're searching, they're stopping a bunch of white people. And listen, white people are cool like that. White people are like, sure, stop me, man. I mean, stop me. I'm on my way to work. Hey, if that's what you gotta do, stop me. Um, I have no problem. I mean, if that's if, if this will help stop crime, and but really what they need to be doing is stopping every single black and Muslim team they see walking around with black on or with a mask on or with you know what I'm saying? Just looking the part. They need to stop every single one of them and search them. And that will stop the, the knife crime. Not stopping a bunch of white people. And a, Okay? And when they say Asians, they're not talking about like goddamn um, East Asians over there. When they talk about Asians, they're talking about people from India and Pakistan. Shout out to Mad Peace, man. Mad Peace in the building. He says, salute, Ock Nation. I never really get a chance to catch you live, so here's a little something to drop on the table. Tell Miss Katie I said hi next time you drive her home. Okay, yeah. Well, the game, the season starts back up soon, and I was going to be driving Miss Daisy around to the game, so I was going to tell her that you said hi. Don't be going getting fresh with Miss Daisy. I don't want to have to uh, – I don't want to – Put you in your place now. Make sure you keep it uh respectful when you talk to Miss Daisy. But I, I tell her you said hi now, sir. Um, Miss Katie. Oh, Miss Katie. Oh, Miss Katie. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes, I do. Oh, Miss Katie. Oh, Miss Katie. Miss Katie. Miss Katie. I love you. Yes, I do. Um. Yeah, man. Salute to Miss Katie, man. Um, but this this right here, and this is something that white people do, man. White people, if if this was reversed, if 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 there was a black country, right? A powerful black country, and they brought in a bunch of white, you know, poor white people, dregs of white society, right? As immigrants, and those white people started stabbing people in the streets that black country wouldn't waste any time stopping any black people they would just stop every white person they saw they would target that community 
But white people are different, man, and this shows it, man. This is the thing about white people that that a lot of um that 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 a lot of POCs intentionally leave out of their stories. That white people are the coolest race, man. <laughs> they the coolest race, man. They the coolest ones, man. They the most measured ones. They the most they the ones that you know the most civilized ones, man. They go about their business in the best way, man. But what I wanted to talk about was this 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 um this situation today in um in London, man. Um that's going on here. Uh we got a we got a situation, man. A situation in London, man. We got a situation in London, guys. It's going, it's going down, down, baby. Um, so this guy right here apparently stabbed. <laughs> he apparently, so now they got a white guy. Isn't it ironic that downtown London, some white guy just randomly stabs an 11-year-old girl and a woman? And they got him, they caught him right there. It, listen, I'm not a y'all know I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Y'all know I'm not a conspiracy theorist, man. And I know we got some people from, from Great Britain in here, man. I want to see bring some of y'all up, man. If you're from Britain, man, come on up, man. Um, if you from UK, come on up, man. This guy right here, this white guy, randomly stabbed. It's it's just so convenient. It's so convenient that this guy um just did this stab attack today while they're having all these. And listen, the thing that everybody knows is that even the people in the street in London that don't see the stats, they know who's doing it. They know who's doing this stuff. It's just weird that today, oh, a white guy just stabbed a little girl and a, and a woman. It's just weird. It's, 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 and listen, weird doesn't mean it didn't happen. It doesn't mean conspiracy. But then this guy's the hero. <laughs> this is the hero, man. Abdullah, man. So this white guy's stabbing a bunch of people, man, downtown, and Abdullah came and saved the day. Man. <laughs> Abdullah came and saved the day, y'all. If it wasn't for Abdullah, man, who knows what would have happened? Thank you, Abdullah. <laughs> What's up, Alexander Byrne? What? what, what? <laughs> Did you find it? Do you find yeah, uh, that, that they, they said it was reported on the Sky News. They said a white, a white, a, uh, a suspect described as a skinny white man has been arrested, <laughs> or skinny white youth. They oh, they gave that. the description. It's funny oh, yeah, they no, give no, the I, description. I thought, I thought he, well, if if he hadn't been white, they wouldn't have. So we have Abdullah came and saved the day. Shout out to Abdullah, man, for keeping the streets of London safe, man, from white people, man. Mm. Wow, what do you think about this story? Do you think that this is what, what do you think about this? Well, it, it could be it could be an Islamist, couldn't it? I mean, there's, there's plenty of white Muslims. It sounds to me like it's, um, you, you know, you get contagion social media. You have some somebody commits a crime, and it's like fashion. You know, it's like one woman wears a mini skirt; they all wear mini skirts. Um, Copycat. Yeah, you said you're not a conspiracy theorist. A lot of this is social contagion. And um, the, the expression they use now is um, ideological capture. This is why you got you, you had homosexuality, and now it's all trends. If you look at the advertisements on um, almost any advertisement, it's, it's, it's got to be a, a black dude with a white woman. 
Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, it's just, just poison, as uh, the great Louis Farrakhan would call it. But um, it's 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 deliberate. There's no need for it. But it, you know, the the idea that there's a force behind it, that there's somebody telling them to do it. No, give them give them agency. They don't right. they don't have to do this. You know, right. Salute to Tonic T, man. Tonic T in the building. Shout out to you, Tonic T. Um, Chili Most 85 coming in the building, man. This woman says, this white woman says, please, please, let's get this shared. This brave young man detained the stabber in Leicester <laughs> Square, potentially saving the lives of the little girl and the woman and saving others. The thing you have to, to you have to remember, and what a lot of people don't, is this isn't an Islamic thing. It's an Islamist thing. Uh, the, 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 there's been an Islamic presence in Britain since at least the early 19th century. The, the first two mosques in this country were founded by white converts, one in Liverpool by a bloke named Quilliam in 1889, and another one in 19, 1889 by... Uh, uh, a white cover, the, the Shah Jahan Mosque, which near Woking, which is extant. Um, the first proper translation of the the Quran was by Marmaduke Pixel, who was another white convert. You never had any of this until it, it, this is Islamism. It's it's related primarily to the Middle East, and you've got these fanatics now who they want to this whole business with Israel um, and Palestine. They, they, want, they want to create a caliphate and they, they'll murder everybody, anybody and everybody who gets in their way. And it's just insane. But it is, including Muslims. But it, this, is, it's, it's difficult. this isn't an Islamic problem. It's an Islamist thing. The way to think about it is like back in the 17th century, you had, um, before that, you had schisms with the church. Um, it's, it's 1605, you had the, the gunpowder plot where you had a group of Catholic conspirators try to black the king, you know, the House of Parliament. And it's that sort of thing. And in Northern Ireland, you had Catholics and Protestants. This isn't an Islamic thing. It's an Islamist thing. But of course... Um, what is know. an Islamist? What is an Islamist? What's the difference between an Islamist and an Islamic? Islamism is a, really a combination of, of um, a, 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 a political... It's a, a clearly, really a political movement. And they want, to, they want to subjugate the world. It's, I mean, yeah, but how can you separate the two, man? I don't think you can separate the two. But let, let me let's hear. Let's listen to this guy, man. Let's listen to our hero, man. Um, he's, a, he's a hero. He's a hero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a hero. All right. Um, Abdullah, man. And he was like stabbing a kid. And yeah, so I saw that he he was stabbing a kid. I jumped on him, hold the hand in which he wasn't having a knife. And they just put him down on the floor and just hold him and kick the knife away from him. And then a couple of more people joined as well. And we just hold him until the police came. Uh, it took like maybe three to four minutes. Police arrived and they just took him into the custody. And the child, just like all my colleagues, they gave him first aid. And in the middle, the police came as well and they just gave him first aid. Oh, yeah. congratulations. So you might have, might have saved a life today. Hopefully, yeah. 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 I just saw a kid who was getting stabbed. And I just like tried to save her. You just ran out of the shop and tried to save the child. Yeah, I don't know. She, she, there were how many family members are there? Mom, the, I just saw a kid being attacked, and it just I, it was my duty to just save them. Were there children? Uh, were there tourists getting involved as well? Uh, and trying to help? No, I haven't seen any. <laughs> Yeah, listen. Um, they they say you're saying it's not the religion, it's the culture. Um, yeah, I still think that you know the religion plays a large part in the culture, but I do think DNA. Those people have a certain type of DNA that predisposes them to certain behaviors. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's it all goes back to DNA, man. Um, at the end of the day, man. Let's see. Uh, a bit of breaking news that we can bring you coming out of central London from the Metropolitan Police. There's been a stabbing in Leicester Square. Uh, the police are saying that a man has been arrested and as in, is in custody and that they don't believe that there are any outstanding suspects. But two victims, an 11-year-old girl and a 34-year-old woman, have been taken to hospital. They are awaiting an update on their condition. So... Uh, a pretty horrific stabbing by the sounds of it in Leicester Square. An 11-year-old little girl, a 34-year-old woman have been stabbed 
A man, though, has been arrested and is in custody. The police don't believe there are any outstanding suspects. That's just come in from the Metropolitan Police. Of course, Leicester Square, right in the heart of London. Very, very busy in the school holidays at the moment. Uh, must have been pretty horrific scenes there this morning. An 11-year-old girl and a 34-year-old woman have been stabbed and taken to hospital. More. On what do you think about this um, burner account, man? What's going on, man? Uh, yeah, I'm not really understanding the whole Islamist versus is that just sounds like nonsense to me. It's that <laughs> that's not. Nah. I don't I don't know what 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 your friend is saying about that. It is a coincidence, but I don't I don't think it's like conspiracy. Yeah, sure. People get knifed, and considering the demographics of the country, you expect more white people. So it's not like some out of the ordinary thing, but it is very convenient, no doubt. Very, very convenient. Yeah, but the 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 majority of these type of random stabbings, like that's like a ninety percent um, non-white. And people thing know there. that. Like, people know that. <laughs> Every, so everybody just, knows this. But but they having all these riots and things and protests, and then all of a sudden, some white guy goes downtown and just starts stabbing people. Well, hold on, just, isn't it's, this it's very uh, convenient? I'm reading right here. Isn't this like an Eastern European? So he's not even like a full blooded like British Isles, no. you know, like he could be Albanian, like white man. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's uh he's a bit off. <laughs> yeah, he could be a, he could be Albanian. Well, yeah, would they consider that Eastern Europe? Oh, they'll try to throw anything on the fringes of white into the white bin in order to like make white people look more violent and more, you know, yada, yada, yada. Like they'll throw Hispanics in and all that shit in, in America. So it wouldn't surprise me if they start like throwing in Georgians and Albanians in like the European context. That would not surprise me. Are they saying this is invalid information? They said it's unverified, but you know he does look like he doesn't look he doesn't look like a a a, a, a typical Anglo Saxon man. But uh, but yeah, it's just weird, man. This guy's a, this guy's a hero. Hey, everybody, look at this heroic. <laughs> and listen, man, it, it could like like I'm not a conspiracy theorist, man. I think things just happen. It's just very very convenient, man. This is convenient, convenient. Well, like the thing behind it is, is like all these simps on social media now, like, like pushing the issue and pointing out that there's an Abdullah that did it. It's not like there's some like secret club that like made this event happen, but there is a club that is, you know, pushing and making it prominent and newsworthy. That's, that's what is intentional. Yeah. Yeah. What has happened to this country, man? Um, the demographics this, this, have changed. That's uh, what's happened. We know what's happened. It's country, very simple. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. It's very, very simple. But it's just, it's just amazing. It's amazing how um, fast it's happened, man. Um, how like it hasn't taken. It hasn't taken um, what. Uh, uh, well, I mean, Tony Blair, so it did take like 20 years, 20 years, it took about 20 years here. Well, it uh, took about me, 20 years. I me mean, even, I, I, I think that's incorrect because you have to understand in the UK, America, you know, basically all the British satellites, right? The uh -huh. like immigration policies changed in the 60s and 70s. Okay. So this shit has been, you know, happening for like 50, 60 years now, but it hasn't like truly reached a critical mass up until the last 10 or 15, 20 years. So that's why it seems like it just exploded out of nowhere. But like, no, it's like our like um, our British guy here on the panel is talking about how like, oh, white people founded the first mosques and all this nonsense. And, you know, it has nothing to do with Islam and it's an Islamist thing. Well, you have to understand when these purported white guys founded the mosques, they were like a tiny fraction of, of the population. So it's normal in the Abrahamic tradition to, you know, not act bad when you're far in the minority but as the demographics shift more and more that's when you start seeing the true faces of these cultures and these religions so I, it's just that's what it is that's what's happening uh, yeah inshallah there'll be a an, we drill an abdullah down? for all these you know crazy white thugs out here stabbing up girls in the streets in london alhamdulillah 
Yeah, man. Um, it's a it's it's sad, man, to see you white people go out like this, man. Can we drill down a little bit on Yvette Cooper's comments of Britain losing respect for the police? Um, I think I've made my position on the police abundantly clear over the years. I support the police, the job they do. I think sometimes in senior areas. There are a lot of question marks. I think we can all agree on that. In fact, I think most bobbies on the beat, to coin that old phrase, would agree and concur with that. She has promised, however, the Home Secretary to restore the public's faith in the law as she warned would-be rioters that streets will be flooded Back the with the police go. this week. She said a soft approach to justice has led to too many people feeling as though crime has no consequences. Oh, we've been talking about this kind of stuff for years on the radio. She said a soft approach yeah, is not... The only reason they're addressing is because white people appear to be acting like crime has no consequences. That's the only reason. The the previous... Because the last, what, six days that white people have been kind of riding and going crazy there over what happened with the three little girls. But so now, oh, people think there's no... When before, it was like literally just a hellscape on the streets, man. And the politicians didn't want to do anything about it. No longer good enough. She called the rioting that erupted across British towns disgra a disgraceful attempt assault on the rule of law itself. Let's just have a closer look at something here. Let me talk about knife crime for a second.